and show themselves to be in severe state of mental illness, then out of necessity we will do what we need to do and you need to do to get a job. And if that means you have to have an SSN, you have an SSN. If that means you have to still use stuff within their system, you use stuff within their system. But as necessity, hence V dot C dot sign, hence dot 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 sign, hence we do what we do, but none of it can be regarded as consent because we do it as necessity and because of that it is not our consent. So I hope that clears up for a number of you that feel pressed through their old game of pressing you into saying, no, we will not recognise this, you do this or else. Well, fear no longer works from people that have no honour, that are stupid, that are cowards. Fear no longer has any effect when you have no mandate whatsoever in law, in spirit, in process. And laugh, they can, for 12 more months. Live it up, they can, for 12 more months. Gouge at the trough, destroy what they will for 12 more months because in 12 months, history will remember the day of judgment came and found each and every one of these flesh spirits wanting. Not their soul, I said flesh spirits, but flesh wanting. The soul is not incompetent, but their flesh certainly is. Now, last point. I know that a number of you have already found yourself under severe distress by clear examples of dishonour. And in particular, I, I recite an example of a, of a woman who's 75 years old who was intimidated by no less than the FBI, marshals and state troopers into not pursuing her right to pursue their dishonour. And lies were told to her in the attempt to persuade her not to pursue. Now, in discussing, it was suggested as an idea that that dishonour really brings it to a higher level. So there's probably no point in pursuing it at a state level where she is anyway because of this example. But I, I, I want to make... I want to make this point, and I have made it tonight, and I've tried to make it important, because I, I, I do feel, for each and every one of you, the frustration when you still see this dishonour. At the end of days, there is a sorting, the wheat from the chaff. And in that sorting, some people, unfortunately, will continue to act in a dishonourable way. But please, please see the bigger picture in front of you. We are restoring the law. They are no longer the law. You are the light. They are not the light. You are the hope. They are not the hope. They are the end. You are the beginning of the change. Please, please don't be despondent when they upset you and hound you. It is not for too much longer. When a system no longer can claim any form of law or legitimacy. Its existence can be measured in months, not years. And the reason that they have sustained this system for so long is that they made sure, in theory, that it was lawful. It may have been immoral, but it was lawful and it was legal. Well, that has officially come to an end. And so we can measure confidently now the end of their world, the end of voluntary slavery, the end of the corruption measured in months. So good luck to you all. Please give me your questions. Uh, I, I look forward to the further updates we're doing and, and help we're doing, like the online Liveborn record and registering your trust. And I now am open to questions. So thank you. All right, Frank, thank you. Can, uh, can you hear me okay? That's Terry? Yes, I can. Yeah. All right, great. Uh, just as a reminder for callers, if you press star 8 on your phone, you get put into a question uh, and answer queue. <clears throat> we'll take you in the order that uh, you're, you're in the queue. Um, to start us off with a couple questions on the chat, we have um, 
Should we put our deed poll on public by internet public notice? If you want to, yes. Okay. Uh, next question from the uh, chat group. Will Eucadia's law be infringing on other free societies' law? Uh, well, in theory, no, but that's really up to um, knowing what the other society law is. Um, good question, but at the end of the day, you, you need to ask if, if, if another society doesn't consider murder a crime, then clearly there's a problem. There, there will always be slight, slight differences because people have different interpretations, but at the end of the day, it comes as... Um, if a society follows the principles of law that were always the principles of civilizations until the arrival of the bar guilds, then I, I, I can't see that there would be any major difference at all. So, no, I don't think there'll be any difference. Okay. All right, great. Thank you, Frank. Um, we have South Minnesota on the line. And just as a reminder, if you press star 8 on your phone, you can uh, enter the question queue from your phone line. On the computer, if you type in your questions on the chat, we'll get to those as well. All right, South Minnesota, you should be unmuted. Do you have a question? Yes, hi, Frank. Um, I hi. Just, I just got a couple concerns on the deed of dishonor. Um, yep. As far as uh, the uh, enacted at and, and, and then the location is, Uh, like I'm, I'm filing mine with the court. Okay. Yep. Um, I know who the consigner is, obviously. Um, and then the consignee would be the, the the name of the court, or are we looking for the judge's name? Well, I I would I would probably keep it um, to the executives and administrators rather than naming the judge because I'll change okay. the judge on you. I'm sorry. What was, uh, the ju- so if, if you name the judge, then the, yeah. what they'll do is they'll just change the judge. Okay. Okay. I see. I'll see. Okay. Ad- administrators and executors. Okay. Um, and, and on the and on the uh, uh, the bill of lading here, down like the third paragraph from the bottom, it says uh, um, the rate for each inquiry calculated uh, insurance bond. How do I know the insurance bond? Do I have to go locate that? No. No. That um, is- in, the system, in the system that we're, we're turning on, so at the moment the insurance bonds are off the, off the system, but okay. the insurance bonds are calculated through the currency system, and the insurance bond has the same number as your trust number, but with the first two characters determined by the region, the Reserve Bank region you live in. So if you live in, in uh, North America, it'll be MZ. If you MZ, live in, correct. correct. Yeah. But if you live in um, Oceanic, it will be OZ, and the table is actually listed in the instruction. So two things there. You'll be able to pull off your own bond probably in about three to four weeks because it will be actually on the register there. It will be the same as, as the creation of the live born record. And secondly, the um, understanding of what the bond number is is what I just explained. It's your trust number with the first two letters change in accordance to the region that you live in as far as reserve banks, okay? Right, I understand that. In in the example here on, on the lading, though, it's it's got MZ and only four numbers. Yeah. Maybe. Well, there's, there's, there's your, your, your trust number is broken into three groupings of, right. of, of six, yeah. right? So the first part of it is the two letters and then four characters. And then there'll be... Another six characters, which so your your trust number is your bond number, with the exception of the first two characters. Okay, I and I'll, see. right, okay. and I will make sure that the example lists the complete number, so that no one gets the is mistaken. Okay, so I'll take that as a as a tip to be fixed. Okay. 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 Alrighty. Thank you. Um, Thank you. For, <clears throat> Thank you, South sorry, Minnesota. Before, go ahead, Frank. Sorry. Yeah, before we get on to the next question, I'll just answer a couple of quick questions that came through the chat. Um, Jeanette said, should you print the live-born record on regular paper or bond paper? It doesn't matter. 
Jeanette, it doesn't matter whether it's Bond or regular because what makes the live born record special is your thumbprint and the words on it. And the, uh, it's okay. Uh, um, thanks, how, yeah. I was getting, I was going to get to those questions. So I've got them all in my queue here. Okay, so I'll let you drive it. Sorry, keep going. All right, all right. All right. Thank you, Frank. All right, uh, can you uh, ask Frank about sending a revocation of signature along with an EDP as uh, discussed last night on Skype? Uh, uh, a few folks it, were speaking on Skype and asking about, uh, we were talking about the revocation of, a sign, of signatures along with an EDP so if you're dealing with situations. Um, I think this is an excellent idea and a very, very important idea. Um, what we haven't done is we haven't refined the ED, the ecclesiastical deed process, uh, to be more specific in terms of the court. Um, I believe now that we've perfected, we are perfecting the process on the registrar, there is still a lot of leeway uh, for the process of an ecclesiastical deed through the court um, so that we um, f focus in. And a revocation of signature, to me, um, basically a withdrawal of consent is really what we're talking about, whether it be um, previous pleas, previous uh, agreements, but certainly on signature, is critical. So I would like to work with, um, with the feedback on this and people providing feedback, but I definitely believe that we need to have that as a tool for people to be able to use Absolutely, yes. Okay, thank you, Frank. <clears throat> uh, yes, we had discussed the uh, withdrawal of consent, which actually covers uh, all contracts, um, known and unknown. So those must be covered as well. Um, can, uh, if you have turned 70 and have moved, does this mean that the registrar in the new state has to have a copy of the EDP? Uh, yeah, well, what happens is um, when you turn 70 and you move to a new state, the presumption is that you will register back into their system through the touch points, the five or six touch points that they have. So that will include um, whether it be a, a, a license or be a home or whatever it is. Now, in that process, what happens 70 years, a CQV uh, is for the life of the estate. So 70 years is the standard length of a CQV. They'll collapse them and um, the CQVs will be recast in the state you're in. That normally is, the, um, is the, the way in which they do it. So the short answer is yes. Now that would be based on um, pretty much uh, if you have any contracts with that state where you have moved, it seems, sure. any kind of contract. That would be how they would have noticed that, that you're there. So that makes sense, uh, right, Frank? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but if you're off the grid in the state you're in and you just happen to be, this is, this is so we cover this hypothetical, if you're off the grid and you turn 70, then your original location will, will presumably create a new SESTA KV in your absence, in the absence of a death record, yeah? That makes sense. <clears throat> okay, we'll go to the phone lines with Ron. Ron, are you there? Can you hear us? Hello, Frank. Ron here. How are you doing? Hi, Ron. How are you going? Hey, good. Hey, um, I'm going to make a kind of a brief statement to um, refresh your memory on what's going on with my civil case. Yeah. Remember back in uh, November 30th, I filed that uh, notice of mistake of fact and uh, conveyance of ecclesiastical deed poll, and the U.S. attorneys had until December 16th to answer. Remember, this is on my on my IRS um, civil case. Yeah. So, obviously, December 16th has passed. They have not answered. So, <clears throat> not only that, they have not scheduled a hearing to convey the deed and transfer the deed and the and the monies across to the Treasury. So the so basically, the, the whole process is sitting there in limbo. I went by my house, my, my old house today, just to see if anybody was living in it. And there's it, the house is um, vacant. And I know this because there's three foot of snow piled in the driveway. So And nobody has moved it. Nobody's gone up the driveway. My question is, since 